right. Welcome everybody to the stream there. Had a little bit of problems here at the start, but uh, we are off and going and we are going to be talking about, oh, let me just hide this here, um, Wet Coast GT2024 and I have with me Daniel Knight, um, one of the fellow bid table teammates and uh hey dan how's it going hello just trying to solve my background a little bit but no problem been a bit of a busy day well that's good it's good so uh, wet coast uh i didn't go to wet coast originally back in the day because i'm newer into the hobby but uh, i know that it's been around for years before the pandemic and this is the first year it is back um, this year, it uh, tapped out at about 164 players, I believe, uh, in the event. It says that uh, I think we were they were close to 170, and then there were some drops. But uh, we had some drops, but then we also had some people volunteer as uh, Philly said he will. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, actually, I was talking to Keone, who was one of the ringers that that stepped up uh, last minute. So, um, this was in Richmond, BC, uh, close to the airport, because we had some people from out of town come in uh, for, through the Pacific Northwest, as well as I believe uh, from across Canada. Um, I'll quickly go over the venue. Venue was in a nice hotel. Um, the parking was interesting to say the least. I got there a little bit late on the first day. Um, but it was free parking if you registered um, as part of the event. So um, I did get a spot the first day and the second day. I just got there a lot earlier the second day to guarantee a spot because I barely got my spot the first day. Um, what about you, Dan? How was your parking experience? Second day was easier. I know first day was rough because due to the timing of when the round people were arriving for the round start. Because since it's at a hotel, they had uh, above ground multi level parking, but. Because the event was starting when it was, it was before a lot of people had left, I guess, for checking out. So there wasn't a whole lot of space initially, but it, thankfully some spots were opening up, so it wasn't too bad. Nice. Shane's already in the chat giving me crap about uh, um, win, win a percentage well, and, and that, all that, the that, mechanics. Uh, we'll go over that later. <laughs> all right. So uh, the size of the room. Unfortunately, I was scrounging, and I, I didn't have any pictures. Um, uh, for the overall, you know, size of it, I, I didn't stand up on a chair or take anything, but it was quite a large room. Uh, we did, though, have tables end to end. I mean, obviously, in a big event, um, space is at a premium, so that's going to be um, always a challenge not to have that. But uh, I got a little lucky, and I think I played four out of my, I think it was four out of six games. It was at least three uh, on the end. Of, of a row very lucky so yes and and i think the one that it mattered one of the ones that mattered the most was uh game three. uh it was game three yeah yeah i played that one at the end so i was against a wall for that uh i had a fun <laughs> game against a certain alex mcdougall and he did a very good impression of his army where he would literally tall crawl under the table to get to the side because it was easier <laughs> But oh, it wasn't too bad otherwise. Just cramped. Yeah. Some learning lessons, I guess, for the next one, just through the way Leo yeah. was. Yep. Yeah. No. Um no overall I think the event was good. Um and um now it, the food situation we, was interesting. Yes. Oh. I need to comment on that. Um the so as part of the event, there was a uh a, you could sort of get a ticket for their buffet that would come as part of it and the first day was um indian so they had um spotty rice butter chicken they had some vegetarian options food was pretty good for the first day i do think the second day was really like even better than the first but that was just out of personal taste um mm -hmm. yeah you're having some focusing issues there on your mic there or on your camera there yeah. mike i wonder if it was just lighting i'm trying to see if i can get the lighting a little better possibly oh let's see yeah now i look like i don't know now i'm under uh, uh, the lack of interrogation as chris just said it's like how he was seeing on saturday night is how you are visible right now yeah it's just my camera's doing weird things so here maybe if i sit a little closer 
but uh yeah we'll see if that picks up um Hopefully. yeah so, but, so so the food was better the second day yes um yeah it was it was i, I think it was what, what fish was it they had um can't remember it it was they had a, a vegetarian chow mein spring rolls mm. rice uh miso soup with a slow cooked snapper i think it was i can't remember what it was but nice. it was really good that sounded really good yeah a lot better than what i had i i uh, i went to on the way down on the first day i stopped at a gas station and bought some sandwiches and uh some energy mm. drinks so mm. It worked. Always hey, it worked. Gotta, gotta love those gas station food. Yep, yep. So uh, I was batching it last week. Uh, my wife and kid were away in Kelowna, so I was, uh, <laughs> it, and it was a long week work wise. So it was like, you know, I couldn't even. I was so busy, I couldn't even do any hobby or anything. So it was just like, all right, let's just get to the event and and play. So, um, and then, uh, yeah, anything else about the event you want to talk about, just in particular, anything else? Not that I can specifically think of. Most of it ran pretty smoothly. I can't think of any large technical errors. Uh, rounds were generally on time. Um, there was a very tall judge running around telling everybody I was cheating. But other than that, it was uh, that was just Miles. So I figured I, that was just par for the course. So. That's usually par for the course of Miles, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, <clears throat> right, so... Terrain and layout. Uh, this was played on Dan Miner's... Uh, terrain sets, uh, deadminercreations.com. Uh, he has two sets there, the bookshelf set, as well as his uh, Leviathan set. Um, I believe two-thirds, is it up to two-thirds, or is it just over two-thirds of uh, the sets were the bookcase um, design, and then the rest of it was on Leviathan. So uh, how many games did you play on Leviathan versus the, the bookcase? I'm trying to remember because I played six rounds of Grey Knights, so most mm -hmm. of my thinking wasn't on the terrain <clears throat> itself. Um, mm -hmm. I think I played roughly 50-50 the way my matchups worked out. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Round one was Leviathan. Round two was Bookshelf. Three was Bookshelf. Um, yeah. And then round four was also Bookshelf. Actually, yeah. So I think it was a little over half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was mostly bookshelf. I think there's only one or two that were Leviathan. Yeah, I think I played um, first game on uh, Leviathan, and then I think the last game was the only set. I, the last two, there was the two games I played on Leviathan. Everything else was bookshelf in the middle. So, and and for me in the tournament, I. Going, I went second the first two games, and then I went uh, first the last four, uh, which actually worked out into the armies um, where where uh, I was playing. So shame of saying that three quarters of the of it was bookshelf, and the bottom quarter uh, were Leviathan. So the funny thing is, my last game, um, I was literally going to be over in the corner, and they said no, nobody can play on the table because there was a massive massive height drop uh between the two joining tables so they stuck us way at the back so that's why we were probably on leviathan uh on the last game so me and me and brendan so um which was a great game but uh yeah so um <clears throat> so the finalists uh i was there was three undefeated out of 166 players 164 um and i was able to uh, get through my games and be one of those undefeated um and you were very very close um you had uh, a crazy crazy game uh against alex mcdougall who i'd like picked as like the dark horse because it's hard to bet against him and i'll let you go into that game real quick and then we're going to rip out some uh rip through some other uh uh, uh games so i'll premise this at least to say is that although i just barely lost to him uh, he then proceeded to get matched into another Grey Knights player for round four, then lost terribly to them due to just some circumstances. Um, but I had a game where it was... I ran six Nemesis Dread Knights, because I'm a villain, and then I had a brick of 10,000 with six Incinerators. And correct, Alex is never a dark horse. He's usually the, the menace you need to watch out for. Um, but I had a lot of flamethrowers, 
and GSC don't like flamethrowers. Um, so I was able to put up a fairly good fight, and it came down to the point where there was there was eleven points worth on me. I was going second, bottom of the round of five. It came down to my combat phase where I had to get a Nemesis Dread Knight to kill two out of three neophytes on objective with it, with five attacks hitting on fours, wounding on killing on twos, and I only killed one neophyte. So oh. unfortunately, um, victory. Well. A loss was snatched from the jaws of victory. Yes. So, and and I, I remember seeing you right after that event, and it looked or right after that game, and you were just like, "I just had to kill too." <laughs> it was very aggravating, and it was also a great game because um, yeah. I, the game before that, I had a ninety three ninety two victory against Blood Angels, mm -hmm. um, and my brain was fried. And then I looked at my phone, I was like, "Oh look, I'm fighting Alex McDougal next! Yay!" Mm. And when and when I mean Dark Horse, I don't mean Dark Horse to win the. I I more meant that as he's the only GSC player there, and if anybody can win the event with GSC, with nobody is taking GSC, is Alex. So uh, Alex is a is a great player. So um, quick, quick thing, Nicholas James, I would agree. However, my track records with Imperial Knights has not been great. So <laughs> yes. So uh, let's jump into some. Lists and matches here. So, um, so those those are the undefeated right there. Um, and I we'll, placed thirteenth, close enough. Yes, yes. Uh, the funnily enough, the funny list that I picked that everyone was like, "Oh, Death Guard with the Fathers," end up going fifth. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, congrats, to Ian Harris, with 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 a great showing. Uh, showing, um, gorgeous army too. And. Yeah, and, and same with uh, Linton uh, Rowan with his Space Wolves. Uh, I ended up playing him in round five, uh, which was uh, a really good game. And uh, yeah, so let's see. Who did who did I play? So, um, well, first, what we will do is... Whoops, that's the wrong list. Oh, somehow I have Trevor Lowen twice. Let me grab my list here. So... Um, <clears throat> my uh, is Blade Champ with Ceaseless Hunter, uh, Shield Captain with an Inspirational Exemplar, um, Trajan Valoris, obviously with the auto take. Um, and uh, oh, uh, Shane was saying that Jind also seemed to do I fine with say, Knights. <laughs> that bad has enough luck to make that faction work because in, in my <laughs> game round six against him. Almost every single mm -hmm. round, his two Hell Varens would get eight successful wounds out of eight shots. There's only one round yeah. where they only got didn't get seven or eight. So, uh, shush. Nice. <laughs> uh, custodian guards with uh, five spheres, uh, three Alaris custodians uh, with spheres, and then two Gravis uh, grav tanks or Ladius grav tanks, and then, then two bricks of warden, Axilla, uh, four vigilators. Four Witch Seekers and a Kalidus Assassin. So, again, my, my idea Assassin's obviously there to score points. The Witch Seekers are there to scout for early points and uh, the Vigil, or just be a meat shield. And the Vigilators um, were there to either score points or go psych Psyker hunting. So, um, this, I played a very similar list. It was, it was a little bit heavier on infantry. Um, going uh to the last uh major at clash which was at the beginning of march and the problem that i found was i just couldn't if somebody had shooting they just didn't have to respect me and mm -hmm. i had to really stage and it was really hard on that terrain at that event uh to stage properly and um it was funny like the the games that i won i felt with this list i probably would have won those games as well and the games that i lost at that event i felt but there was no way I could win. I needed some sort of shooting. So that's why the tanks came back in the list. And I know we had a test game where I was running the new changes to Dread Knights, mm -hmm. and you had a horrible time because I yes. would sit 24 inch, just 23.9 away from your warden squads, and you would have to roll a six to advance with the blade, the blade ward, uh, yep. the blade champion, and then roll an 11 to charge in order to make it. And if you yep. didn't roll that six to advance, you weren't getting to combat. Yep. No, and it was it was not a fun game <laughs> because literally then he's like shoot you back up shoot you oh teleport over here shoot you back up so it was, it was uh, I I learned there I I needed some some, 
So, um, so going to ups, uh, I played Patrick Cresswell uh, game one. Um, great guy. Didn't know what custodies were like. He had played them in ninth, um, but he really hadn't played them in tenth. And he was playing uh, demons. Uh, um, uh, big boy list so he had all the greater demons uh he he didn't have the the Slaneshi one i'm trying to remember her name Hel- that one no. is shalaxi help shalaxi there you go and without um, that that sounds like a very ripe harvest for you to pick yes yes he uh, he also held his bloodthirster off the board uh and then decided and also didn't put it in on turn two so i just went at him and uh before that bloodthirster could really be a problem and at the end of turn two i think um uh bellacor was on like one or two wounds left the greater uh great unclean one was dead uh the bird was dead and just like nurglings were gone like it was basically oh and i killed one of his he had two um the help uh uh the Chaos Knight variants of the Helvers. Was it the Gatling Gun? No, they had the uh, Meltas. They had the Meltas. Just Meltas? Melta Melee? Uh, no, Melta Shooty. They were hitting on twos. Oh, yes. Okay, those were the Brigands. Yes. So one Brigand was dead. The other Brigand wasn't on the board yet. Um, in, my, in, in my first turn, I really made it difficult for him to try to get anything at me, and he had to kind of pop into areas that i wanted him to go and then i was able to to really go after him so um good game um ended up winning that one um uh quite easily again he just didn't realize how tough uh uh custodians were when he when he did hit me with the 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 bloodthirster um second game was up against shane mitchell uh i can't say enough about this opponent great guy um, really just wanted to go drink, but uh, I ended up uh, still playing um, and because I was driving and didn't quite get the hidden communication in there that we should just go drink. Uh, Shane had played into Orcs, I believe, the turn before, and Brain was already spent and uh, didn't really want to play three hours in the Custodes, but he's a gentleman and a scholar. Um, so I ended up uh, getting that. Just at the tail end, Miles was coming around yelling dice down, and I made a charge onto his uh, home objective and scored capture. And uh, we were both pretty low scoring in that game. We were in the 60s. So um, uh, he was playing CSM. Um, then I played uh, James Jones, uh, Mr. Initiative. I, f- I fought him round four. Oh, nice. So uh, in this one, this uh, was oh god, uh, what is the long uh, the long board? Not Donald of War, but Hammer uh, and Anvil. Hammer and Anvil, and it was three objectives in the uh, in the middle. Your home objective. It was sites of power, and um, I got to go first, and he put a lot of wolves in the open. And between Trajan double shooting, um my tanks and everything else just advancing and shooting i managed to clip a bunch of wolves and um then what happened was i got all my characters except for my blade champ uh and one unit with the blade champ onto the objective i rolled my advance i rolled from a two to a one um uh with his reroll, and uh i figured okay let's where can we put him i put him in such a way that i knew that when he advanced into me he wasn't going to be able to cut me off from the objective so when he advanced into me on that side, I just used my once per game reactive move and got onto the objective. So if I needed the fight first or or any of that sort of stuff. Uh, then I fought first with Trajan uh, into the squad that went into him. I managed to kill that basically down to, I think it was just the captain left. Um, and then uh, popped my four up, feel no pain on the middle objective and the other objective where he had wolves and wolf, uh, Wolfkin, and uh, they he unfortunately activated wrong, and he activated on the blade champ first, so I spent two CP for uh, the minus one damage, and then I used the captain to do it again for free. So um, he basically bounced, and then I just spent the rest of the game chewing through his wolves. So um, he he was uh, a little upset. He made a mistake. I let him take some stuff back, but it was 
not as much as he would liked. He put, um, I'm going to totally butcher this guy's name, but the guy with the sled. Um, Logan oh, Grimnar. Logan Grimnar. Um, he put Logan Grimnar uh, on the wrong side of the table, and then he, he, he ended up pulling, I let him go back a little bit, but he had to keep him on that side of the table. And, um, yeah, and that, and that was that game. Uh, so that was in the day one. Day two, um, I went into so, Sunny. Um, funnily enough, I literally played Sunny in the exact game, on the exact layout, everything at Kippers last year. Um, that game I did lose at Kippers. This game I didn't. Um, I basically knew that the long, with Tau, the longer the game goes, the more, more powerful they get. Um, so... I literally just went at him and I was able to get into cover and choose my, my timing when to go all into him. And uh, I was able to use my custodian uh, terminators to come down, pick off all of his crew shields with the grenade, la- the grenade launchers, and then um, shoot. Uh, who's the character that has the aura of reroll ones? Um, Shadow Sun. Shadow Sun. I was able to pick her off um, off an objective and then charge a Riptide. So um, that was a good turn. Uh, I got my tempting target. I got assassination. It was it was a big swing. Um, but Sunny's a good opponent, and uh, he clapped back at the end, but it just wasn't enough. And then in my fifth game, I played Linton uh, Rowan again uh, with uh, Space Wolves. So another uh, uh, Space Wolf Jail or Jail Wolf Jail, and again another mission where we're playing Dawn of War, but three missions in the middle, two on your home, and I got I got uh, to go first. So again, everything right up on to this one had a lot more cover for his wolves, um, but I was able to get all my um, units where I wanted to with advances, um, so I could dictate the fight first in the fight phase. He thought I was going to split all my units out. Um, I just left one on the objective alone and I actually sent my sisters after that objective with the swords and they were just there to tie up a, a brick of wolf and um, my three squads then just picked off his other squads and by the time he swung around my terminators came down and helped me pick up the rest of them and uh, that was that game. Um, in the last round I did get paired down and we were I was playing Brandon St. Pierre awesome player. Me and Brandon, I think, had played four times pre- prior to this. Um, two Death Guard, two Trikari, and all of our games had been decided within three points. And um, this one, I knew Death Guard again, the longer the game goes, their auras get bigger, they get stronger. Um, but this one, was he was parked very tightly because he had a lot of vehicles, he had a lot of rhinos, and he had um, his tanks. So what I did is I just literally just shoved up the board and took away the space that he needed to get out. And so he couldn't get the rhinos around and he couldn't get the tanks around. And I just kept scoring. This was a hold more, kill more. And I just kept scoring. I'll just outscoring him that way. So um, great opponent though. Um, and yeah, those were my six games. So sounds like you had a pretty good run and a couple of, yeah. uh, well, paired in some preferable matchups at least, which is good. Yes, the wolves were were definitely um, really good. Tau um, is always interesting, and it really depends on the board and the mission. And Death Guard can go either way. Death Guard are, are kind of neutralize a lot of um, uh, what I can do. They also do have fights first, so um, interesting. Um, Makes being aggressive uh, match up there kind of a tenuous yep. proposition. Yes, yeah, you really got to choose your your space. So. Um, you're going to go over Trevor because you had spoken with him and you run a very similar army and uh, list. Yes. Let's so list. let's go over what he has here and just bring him up as well so. to make this easier. All right. Do you want me to just rip through it or are you going to rip through it? I'll rip through it in a second here. Sorry about that. So he had some right. interesting choices that were a little different in some regards. Um, he was running. So let's go through the list exactly. Uh, he had Caldrago, a Brotherhood Tech Raid. He had a Grandmaster, a Nemesis Red Knight, with the Sigil of Exigence. So if you shoot at him, um, he can go up and then drop back down immediately. 
before you resolve mm -hmm. your attacks. You had to bring mm -hmm. a 10 Terminators with side cannons. He had two five man strike squads, two five man interceptor squads. Uh, all of them are just store bolters of melee weapons. And then he had three Nemesis Dread Knights with mm -hmm. Gatling. Uh, well, he had a mix actually here. Um, mm -hmm. Two had Gatling silencers with heavy sack cannons. One had a heavy incinerator with heavy sack cannon. Uh, the ones the Gatlings had hammers. The one of the incinerator has a sword. Uh, the Grandmaster also had uh, incinerator and hammer. So it had a bit of a mix of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then he had a Catalyst Assassin. So this one was a little bit different when I picked it up and saw it at least. I was really glad he went did so well. Um, the noticeable the weapon loadouts between the Dread Knights can vary a little bit. The main thing is he mm -hmm. had he didn't wasn't running the fists, which there's no reason to. And he had mm -hmm. the heavy side cannons, which is what you really want to be wielding around those things. But the it main might be difference... a little a little bit of hobby leg, right? Or hobby cut over from very last much edition. the case because last edition it was Gatling Silence or Heavy Side Cannon you wanted, and you wanted swords usually. The hammers weren't very good, so this edition has been a bit mm -hmm. of a switch up for that. Uh, but the mm -hmm. main difference was him running two strike squads and two interceptor squads. Um, so to quickly summarize, the strike squads are just five man Marines with a two up save, they have mass crafted force, they basically have force weapons. Uh, so strength six minus two two, and storm yep. bolters, and they have a six inch scout. They move six, they auto advance oh, nice. six, and they stick your objectives for 125 points. Um, so what he would do is he'd have one scout squad he would keep towards his home objective, and the other he would aggressively scout up the board to go push for a middle objective to try and tag that. Um, that way, if he stickied it, he could pull off that objective entirely force the opponent to divert units to go deal with that, and then he could, if need be, collapse on that, or at least put, push them into an awkward position of having to expose units. Uh, the other fun unit he had were interceptors. They are essentially just space marines with the exact same weapons, except they have a 12-inch move, and rather than scout and sticky, uh, when they shoot, they get to move six inches. Ooh, spicy. So the fun thing with Grey Knights is that because of their detachment ability, if you really need them in a pinch to, let's say, help do some extra damage with a Satan, they can advance 18 inches guaranteed and throw a grenade. Wow. Which can be very useful in a lot of cases when you can just go straight through ruins and have them mm -hmm. where you need them to be. Um, having that sort of mobility on a unit for scoring or for leveraging grenades or such can mm -hmm. be a lot of a lot of utility available to you there. Oh, um, one difference he had was with the Calder Drago going with the Brotherhood Terminators. There's a fair amount of damage output from that unit, and if they get to get the drop on someone and they make that 6-inch charge, they can reach out and tag multiple units, which can cause mm -hmm. a bit of a mess for some armies. Um, but yep. the main issues, if you want it into either Catan or any armies with modifiers, it can hurt a bit more there. Speaking of, yeah. let's go into his games played because he had a couple games where this would have mattered. So his first game was into... Uh, let me get the name here so I can at least say who was Jason fighting. Jason Saunders. Jason Saunders. Now, Jason had a Canoptic Court Necrons list. Uh, he did... Let's see. He ran Nightbringer... Oh my lord. Okay, that is just a... Uh, let's take a look here. Chronomancer, Locust Lord, Overlord, uh, Technomancer, Technomancer, Nightbringer, uh, Void Dragon, Brick of Ten Immortals, two units of three Scarabs, a uh, unit of three Heavy Destroyers, two units of three Tomb Blades, two units of six Wraiths, and a Doomstalker. So I know what he did for games like this when he ran into Necrons is the um, Grandmaster and Red Knight would basically run up to one of the Wraith Bricks, uh, grab Precision for one CP, and bop the Technomancer from the head to remove their Fiendal Pain. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of dealing with the, the Nightbringer or the Void Dragon, he would move and uh, basically put two or three Dread Knights into a single Satan at a time. One of them would Tank Shock. He would throw a grenade to help add up the damage, and he would just throw as much volume of shots as he could just to chip away. Mm -hmm. um, it did take 
I think you said on average he needed about three Dread Knights to kill one Satan, but it was Oof. fairly reliable for him when he did mm -hmm. have did try it. Um, so that game he ended. Let's double check the score here. That game. Let me just go with the pairings. What did they end for score? Uh, that was a very low scoring game. It was a forty-five to thirty-eight win for round one. No. And then for round two, he went into a Vanguard uh, Dark Angels list, which he won 97 Ooh. to 72. Didn't have too much to say at the time for this one. This one's kind of an interesting one with a mix of Hellblasters, Interceptors. Um, he had two five man Deathwing Knights, which unfortunately did cop a nerf. Uh, he yep. ran a Brick of Centurion Devastators. Uh, and some assault intercessors, intercessors with jump packs. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I didn't have too much to note about this game. Uh, I did hear about his round three, which was into <laughs> JT McDowell. JT McDowell. Yep. I heard it from JT McDowell in the words of fuck Grey Knights. Sorry for the language. Um, <laughs> I played against JT recently at the Heroes. Uh, yep. Our GT we had recently, and he had ran some uh, Talos paint engines, and those things are a nightmare to do with this Grey Knight player. However, everything else was all right. Uh, so looking at JT's list where he has no Talos and a lot of just small units and lots of Venoms, um, heavy side cannons love Venoms if they can get a couple shots off, uh, unless the Venoms. Oh, I could imagine. Players. A little yeah. T, I think it's T five for Venom. With six wounds Oof. and I think like a six up end vuln and a four up armor. So unless he spends a CP for a four up end vuln and spikes, yeah. it's usually not a good time. Um, and yeah, uh, he didn't have any any Talos. So it was a rough game for him. Uh, it was an 80 to 64 win for Trevor. Um, just the mobility, having access to volume from Storm Bolters and Flamers against. Um, T-shirt saves, um, yeah, and units that don't yeah. want to be exposed that are forced to be exposed because Grey Knight yeah. teleports. Yep. Uh, his next round, he went into uh, an Iron Storm Blood Angels list. Uh, Travis Grant. Ooh, Travis Grant. That was a seventy-seven to fifty-six win for him. Uh, let's see three Tech Marines with the usual Augury Web, Adept Now Messiah, and War Machine, uh, Master of Machine War. So that was Lethal Hits Aura. Advance and shoot, or fall back and shoot, aura, and then zero damage, aura. Uh, who had two blisses dreadnoughts, death company dreadnoughts, uh, you know, interceptors, two units of infiltrators, two redemptors, a repulse executioner, scout squad, whirlwind, and callous assassin. Uh, hmm. This one's a bit interesting. I didn't hear too much about this game specifically. I do know at the very least that due to the mobility and the range he had. Uh, heavy side cannons would go quite nicely into the Death Company Dreadnought, dude being strength 10 versus strength, uh, toughness 9. Um, hmm. I haven't tested Dreadnoughts into Redemptors yet, so I'm curious how that matchup would go, because of the minus 1 damage. Dreads yeah. have the durability, but the... Well, sorry. Redemptors have the durability, but the Dreadnoughts have some pretty good mobility, and as well as the melee, so... Yeah, the damage um, put is, a lot, is, a lot, is quite a bit higher. So. The other thing as well is that in my round six against Jind, I had a Grandmaster and Dread Knight walk up to a Knight Cascader and smack it for 25 damage in one combat. Oh. So, uh, having full Ouch. reroll hits, wounds, and damage with a uh, melee weapon is pretty nice, but it's d6 plus one. Oof. Yeah, Ouch. five swings. Uh, hits as hard as an Eradicator squad in some ways. Not quite, but pretty close. Um, I do know for round five, he had a mirror match. Uh, just like me, funny enough, there were two Grey Knight mirror matches going on at the same time for round five. Uh, and like me, he had advantage, uh, the advantage in that one a bit. Um, mm -hmm. The other Grey Knights list was a little bit different. He also ran three Dread Knights and a Grandmaster in Dread Knight, but he had first the free on his. Uh, but the difference he had is that he had a brick of Purifiers with Castell and Crow. Now, Purifiers are great at killing infantry. They have a very high volume of a lot of ignores cover at AP minus one. Yeah. The issue being AP minus one. So into Grey Knights uh, with a 
Armor of Contempt, that is not a battle tactic, they don't really do a whole lot when they're hitting two-up saves. So that unit kind of didn't help them at all, um, which ended up being enough of their favor where just due to the points, the, the gap in lists in terms of what they had to do with each other um, yeah. ended up being in Trevor's favor. And then I know for the last game, uh, he ran into another Necron player who was playing Hypercrypt. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just quickly double check what he had for that Necron player. Uh, that was an 84-80 win, which is very close, it looks like. And that was the Purge of the Foe. So uh, so this was Hypercrypt running uh, Nightbringer, Void Dragon, a Hexmark Destroyer, and two Technomancers. It had a Canoptic Reanimator, Canoptic Spider, uh, two Bricks of Wraiths, a uh, Unit of Deathmarks, a Doomsday Arc, a Lone Locust Destroyer, and a Tesseract Vault. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Tesseract <laughs> Vault is the giant... Lord of War, if you will, that has yeah. a Satan chart in it. Um, but apparently, due, I don't know if it was just due to where they wanted it, but I believe mm -hmm. it spent most of the game towards the opponent's deployment zone. Uh, oh, well. Let's take a look here. If I can notice. Yeah, everybody was talking about how scary that list was um, and how. The Tesseract Vault basically can fire indirect. It's got a crazy amount of damage output. And uh, as Kaz put it, there's basically a 24-inch bubble around it where you don't go. <laughs> so. Yeah, here we go. So this was one of the matchups where uh, he used the second strike squad to pressure Sticky from the middle objectives. And it was a little far away from most of the opponent's things. So it was either yep. let uh, Trevor Sticky the objective or yep. kill them off, and usually it's a little bit harder for the, if the Granite player is using True Silver, because True Up Save reducing AP by one potential with cover makes it so you have to commit a bit more. Yep. Um, apparently the Necron player had to, they ended up committing the Nightbringer over to try and kill them, because nothing else was close by. And he had set up so that um, whatever wanted to contest that Strike Squad had to deal with, with several Dread Knights and the Grandmaster Nemesis Dread Knight, who ingressed outside of 12, so that the following turn, when the Nightbringer moved up, uh, he removed the Nightbringer in turn with the you know, he had, units he had there. Oh, wow. um, he spent apparently a lot of his time, not a lot of his time, but he he, he tried to kill the Katana as quick as possible in the games, so that they mm -hmm. weren't pieces later on. Um, yeah. And I think that helped pull just enough pressure off him that he was able to eco to win on that game. Oh, wicked! Yeah, I know that 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 list going uh, into round six. Um, everybody was talking about like, oh, what do we want to play? What we don't want to play? And uh, that list sounded very scary. So, um, all right. So great showing for Trevor Lowen uh, going undefeated, and then the last undefeated player is Brendan McKenzie. What we're going to do is we're actually just going to go over uh, his list really quickly. We're not going to go through his matches because we're planning on doing an interview with him on another game a little bit later in the week just to kind of hear uh, his take on, on all of his games and, and what he had to do. So, uh, Dan, you want to rip through his list real quick? Sure. Let me just pull that up. We'll rip through that. And that'll be it. So. I got it on screen if you need, but... Uh, yes, just a little easier for me to read it up when I have it on the phone here, because then I can actually no look problem. at the details. No problem. Here we go. All right, so he had Morven Vol. Uh, he's running Judith as well. Uh, an Imaginifier. Mm -hmm. uh, Palantine with Blade of St. Uh, Eleanor. A Missionary with Saintly Example. Uh, he had three Paragon War Suits with Maces and Multimelters. He had a Battle Sister Squad. Uh, mm -hmm. Second, two battles of squad, a Naviet squad, two emulators, a Rhino, ten Rapantia, two units of five Zephyrim, uh, three units of two Crusaders, three units of ten Arcoflagellants, two Death Cult Assassins, and a unit of five Seraphim. Uh, that just looks like a whole bunch of trash, and I think that's exactly yep. what he needs to yep. do well by the looks of it. Uh, I know I've picked up bits of his conversation. Uh, Arcoflagellants. We're doing a lot of work for him, it seems. Um, mm -hmm. Just 
for a good chunk of the games. That and I think they have, a, they have a four up field, no pain, right? They do, and I believe yeah. two wounds. So they they're not, and they have a high volume of attacks. So yeah. against anything with a two up save, they usually bounce. But it's enough mm-hmm. where anything else is concerned enough to deal with them. Yeah. Um, and then more of them involved with the Paragon War suits are actually a unit to be worried about dealing with. They've got a fair amount of output, but we'll probably hear more about that later when yep. we get an interview with them, which I think is later this week. Yes. Yep. So again, uh, congratulations to Brendan uh, for being undefeated. Um, so there are your three undefeateds there for um, Wet Coast GT 2024. I'm sure we'll be back here next year at Wet Coast 2025. Is there Anybody else that you wanted to list you want to talk about or call out or anything? I know we went over some before the tournament, but... Yeah. Um, nothing in particular. I'll admit, after playing Great Nights for six rounds, um, and Trevor also agreed to a point, it was it's a, very much a strain on my brain, so I don't remember a whole ton from the event other than focusing during the games. Um, yeah. Uh, think here mostly just gorgeous armies there was a lot of well-painted armies and great conversions yes. and just good seeing yes. the community together again yep no absolutely all right guys well that was our our recap there um you know uh anything you guys would help us out um i'm just gonna put up some uh QR code. So Proxy Wars, uh, they are a sponsor of ours. If you're looking for any model model alternatives or anything like that, uh, check them out. That's a QR, card, QR code up on the screen. Um, as well as we've got uh, Heroes of the Mid-Table Spring GT. It does say 31 and 40 sold, but we are sold out. Um, please let us know if you want to get on to um, the waiting list. Um, every event we've had, we've, we've basically been sold out, but we've had to go through our waiting list um, sort of on the last day uh, and uh, to get everybody in there for 40 people. Um, and then also best way to help and um, uh, is to like, subscribe, you know, all of the above, become a member. Uh, it really helps us out, uh, be able to do what we do. And uh, last but not least, Shane wants to let everybody know that Thousand Suns is busted. And also, uh, we do have another uh, mid-table tournament, our summer tournament, coming up August 24th, 25th. Uh, Tickets won't go on sale until uh, we are done the next event. Um, And we also do uh, have one in the fall, but those tickets won't be coming up until the August one is sold out. So I uh, really appreciate Danny, uh, appreciate Danny coming on here and helping out and uh, doing a recap. And uh, we'll talk to all you guys later. Oh, where is it?